The three things which I work on is work ethic, discipline and, and then results. Without discipline you've got nothing. We rented houses here in Manchester. The guys pay towards their sort of living uh, accommodation and they have a timetable every week that's sent to them on the Friday, which runs then from the, the following Monday. Timekeeping has got to be like spot on. I did want it to be sort of slightly army, if you like, trying to find out the ones who are weak and don't actually mentally really want it, you know, and it does find them out in the first few months. The best thing you can do is spend all your time with them, you know, and if your influences are right and, and you can get the guys riding in, in the way in which you want them to ride, um, that means spending every day literally sometimes 24 hours a day with these guys all the time. I think uh, everybody sees me slightly different, yeah. I, I think I'm more of a life coach at this stage with some of them. Some are more mature than others and, and they use me as a coach straight away. Others, I think, do use you as somebody to speak to on a daily basis, just about normal life, I think, you know, so as somebody did say to me once, if you're not prepared for any of, to be brother, dad, coach, whatever it may be, if you don't like that, get out now. So it made, it did make me think that was when I started the job and I thought it was quite a good thing to say. Eighteen years old, first time I've been away from home been five, six weeks now and I'm sort of getting to terms with my home's not my home anymore. This is my home here. So I'm not missing it too much. Uh, to be honest, I'm not even speaking to my parents that much. <laughs> They're sort of busy doing their own thing and I'm busy doing my own thing and it sort of makes it a bit easier for me, sort of separating completely. So. I'm going all right at the moment. <laughs> it's good to be around people your age and growing up, it's it's a weird thing and we've had to grow up quite a bit these last few weeks, but I think I'm doing a pretty good job on it. <laughs> this period as well, what we call the boot camp, um, you know, it, it, it is about them riding into work every day and then riding home, so I want them to feel like they actually are doing a proper job, you know. Like, we have a laugh with our old school friends. They're like, oh, are you still cycling? I don't think they understand how serious it is actually to us. I mean, we've, we've given up a lot, but we, it's what we've chose to do. One of, the, one of the things that I, I, I knew I needed to do when, when you've got young lads together, the days need to be full. And, you know, primarily it's all about cycling. That's, that's all we're really interested in is how fast they can go on the bike. You know, how fast can they do that, that, that discipline? So that, that's the first thing we look at. But I don't believe that just doing that and nothing else is, is good enough. I think um, they've got so many more hours in the day and I think we're trying to work to, to an eight hour working day. So they've got, they've got plenty of time and I think filling their days up with other educational stuff helps them become what better athletes really. We live in Italy for six months of the year, so doing a language course sort of fitted really, really well. Anytime you mention anything bike related, you can see them taking notes in a way that maybe they wouldn't normally, because they grasp it straight away that you know that, that is useful. You know that I'm possibly going to say. You give them the word for wheel, and like, okay, but I need to know what's the front wheel and what's the back wheel. But the moment that they click, that hang on a second, this is useful, um, then you just don't, you can't shut them up, which is nice. <laughs> the style of what they're doing on the track today is quite a hard session. The speed that they're going to be asked to go at actual cycling they may do three hours only today on the bike so in terms of that it's not that it's not like in a big endurance day but it's hard because of the detail and the concentration needed on that track session you 
you know, they don't like me, I don't think, at first. They see me dictating to them regularly. They see that they're, oh, I have to do everything together, the, the, this together, that together, the, you know. But here I'm trying to create a team, a team of people who work together, you know. And these guys have got to look across on the start line, say in the team pursuit, and there's four of them on the track, they've got to look at each other and know everything about each other. Yeah, a lot to do with it is how far you can push yourself mentally as well as physically. Yeah. I suppose if you've done sport you realise how tough mentally it is on and off the bike. You know, when it's really hurt you just gotta think, you know, it's gonna hurt and you just gotta dig in and let you know, take it type of thing. But people have it over others and you know, some people it's a weak point, some it's a strong point, so whichever it is it's you know, either way, you've got to still work on it and, you know, try to tolerate that pain. I was out for a month with a viral infection and I was coming back from the viral infection and I was training quite hard and I ended up getting slight Achilles tendonitis. So that put me out and it sort of knocked me back this year, really. I haven't done as well as I should have. My head was all over the place. Uh, it was it was an important year for me. I had to prove myself to get here, and I knew that I needed to get to the Worlds and the Europeans, and that was affecting me getting there. So my head did go, and I was in a bit of a slump, and going out partying, and just being sort of being a teenager, but I didn't want to be. Um, but I got, I got out of it thanks to the coach and, the, and I'm here now, so must be all right. <laughs> I don't think it was the case of Russell struggling to, he just couldn't get on the wheel, that was the issue. I think another lap and somebody being in front, he would have lost it eventually. So, you know. It was a hard day for me, but it got better. You've got to just got to dig in with those sort of sessions. You're not going to be flying every day, so those are the sessions that make you really. They're the sessions that some of your competitors may throw in a towel and you get that extra edge. So that's how you've got to think, really. We feel very proud that we run a very, very, very tight drug-free programme. We can perform at this level and, and be good without going down any wrong, wrong roads, you know, so... And we feel quite, quite proud that we're, we're standing up now with 100% me and saying this is what we're doing. It's an honour, really, to be part of it, to be part of an initiative, be at the forefront of it. It's really good for me, and I'll be proud of wearing the colours and, and races. Racing is about being under pressure and dealing with the stress. I've got to work with them and get them ready to deal with pressure and stress and dealing with their demons and gremlins of I can't do this and oh, you know, just moments before they get on the bike. This is all about cycling and every pedal revolution counts, I think, you know, and the more miles they can put in the bank, the better they'll be. At the moment, it's massive focus on, on London 212, yeah. Massive focus, yeah. Which is, I mean, how exciting is that? <laughs> For, yeah, anybody who's working in sport now, in the UK, um, just like, there is, there, I don't think there's a, there's a bigger goal in my lifetime, certainly in working lifetime, there won't be a bigger goal than this. Eight three, eight four, 
My goal now is just to, you know, I hope to be, you know, a world champion in the next couple of years. And just basically it's just to get the best out of myself, you know, just put the work in and see what happens, you know, and just take it as it comes. Just every race I do, just try and do as best as I can. Okay, once you set president, that's it for the rest of the warm-up. I'm only 30 minutes away from the Olympic Village, so it would be a dream come true if I was in the Olympics, so close to my home. Because it was getting into an effort. You did an 8 0 half lap there, 16 second laps. You haven't been doing that in race effort in our. Every athlete looks at the Olympics, I think. Just being on the top step in, in London, it'd be the ultimate dream. On your home crowd, it'd be just awesome. You've got to have a drive to do this, definitely. You, you can't be lazy or... Um, and you've got to want to do it on your own as well. You know, like if you didn't have a coach or you didn't have the support, you'd still actually go out there and try and find your way, you know, in, in whatever you're trying to do. I think, the, I think they've all got something quite special, yeah. Like a drive that is quite unique. That's just our life, really, cycling. Now it's what we've chose to do. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll win some medals in cycling, definitely, yeah. Okay, well, if you've just joined us, we're bringing you the final of the 15km scratch race as the riders are all lined up here getting ready. It's a great crowd watching the action, lots of celebrities from the world of cycling. Well, the winner of the track event there, the 15 kilometer track rider for Great Britain, Russell Hampton, riding for the team 100% Me, a new British squad. And basically what that's all about is a campaign against doping in sport.